Always a Yelet is the foremost internationally acclaimed authority on developing true connections. A Yelet is the founder and CEO of Universal Connections Inc., the world's premier relationship firm that is revolutionizing life through holism and truth. A highly sought life and relationship coach, professional matchmaker, astrologer, philosopher, and author, a Yelet is always a Yelet. Today's show of the Always a Yelet episode is sponsored to you by Mount Gox, mtgox.com, and usgoldcoins.com, and mezzygrill.com. Thank you, and welcome to Always a Yelet. It is my sincere honor and pleasure to be here yet again, and I want to thank you, my viewers and loyal fans and audience, for your overwhelming response. It's deeply moving and, and touching for me that I've been getting such an overwhelming response to my first two episodes. Um, it's my sincere honor and pleasure to be here and to share with you my unique insights to life, love, and relationships, and try to expose some truth along the way as well. Um, tonight, joining me is a very special guest. Well, actually, before I introduce my, my special guest t tonight, um, I wanted to say that I extend my deepest and sincerest heartfelt condolences to the families of the fallen Navy SEALs that, 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 um, that perished in Afghanistan last week. My love and blessings are with the families. I was hoping to do a segment this week um, with a friend live from Afghanistan, but it didn't work out. God willing, next week we will be able to um, hopefully um, have that on the air. Um, but my deepest condolences, and it's a travesty what the world has come to, and it's, I believe, every individual's responsibility, responsibility to wake up, educate yourselves, get informed, learn, and work to make a difference and stop what is trying to uh, consume and defile our beautiful world that is you know, God's creation. Um, the other very important thing I wanted to comment about this week is the word confidence. It's a big word I'd like for you, my audience, to keep in mind for the duration of the show. Um, it has been brought to my attention that consumer confidence is at an all-time low. Since in, in 30 years, since 1980, we haven't seen such a low confidence rating. And I will be talking about this in greater depth later on in the show in the Simple Truth segment. But um, confidence is a very important element both to our economic crisis and our societal crisis, which is adversely affecting our love relationships, our relationships at large, whether they be business, uh, personal, um, political, etc. And um, with faith, confidence, comes from the Latin derivative, with faith, with belief. If we don't believe in ourselves, we will, we will perish. We must have faith. And believing in ourselves and believing in God or whatever it is we choose to believe in, but we must have faith. And you know, they say you know, faith is blind, and we, you know, that, that's, that's the whole point is, it actually, in my personal experience, faith isn't blind. I, I've witnessed um, miracles. I've witnessed um, because I'm conscious to it. And if you, all you need to do is open your eyes and look around and see the miracles transpiring around us each and every day in each and every aspect of our lives, I firmly believe that will help to enhance your faith in life, in our fellow man, and in our hope and potential for the future. So please keep that very important word in mind today, um, audience. Um, the word is confidence. And without further ado, I want to introduce today a very special friend, a very special guest, who is honoring me with his presence today. He's a dear friend. We are like-minded entrepreneurs. I, I, I think that's the best way to describe it. And he's going to be joining me for the Simple Truth segment on life, love, and relationships. We're going to talk about his life, love, and relationships and his unique entrepreneurship and what he's bringing to, um, to us, to the planet, to the universe on how to make our lives better. So without further ado, allow me to introduce my very special guest, Solomon Abadi. Thank you. I yell it. You're very welcome. It's a welcome. pleasure to be here today. Thank you. It's great to have you. Thank you. 
So let me just give you a little bit, some credits on um, Solomon. Solomon is a certified NASM, ISSA, and TRX, he, which is um, National Academy of Sports Medicine, mm -hmm. International Sports and Science, Science Association, and suspension. You're certified in suspension training, training as well. Very interesting. Um, Solomon is a health and fitness coach, and he is the president of Brand New Day Fitness which is an in-home fitness and meal planning service. And he's been doing this for the past six years. Um, he does personal training, meal planning, and he's a healthy cooking guru. He creates the most amazing creations, and we're going to talk all about that as well. Very interesting, as are all my friends, very interesting and exceptional people. I, I have to say I put them in a very small, small list. Um, Solomon is also an actor and a jazz standard singer. He's beautiful, beautiful voice and very talented. And very interesting, and I think most compelling to this very unique background that he has and unique life that he lives, is that he has a bachelor's in business administration from Baruch College. Baruch College. Baruch College. And you call it Baruch, like I call it Baruch. <laughs> and um, he has a degree in finance and investment and a minor in sociology. So I think that's how we kind of, yep. our simpatico very was... Similar. was born along those lines. So tell me about you. Tell me about your work. What made you business, finance, investment, and now you're, 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 a, you're fitness. a fitness coach? Um, well, I, and the arts. And course. the arts. Um, in high school, I was actually a little bit out of shape. And um, I went to yeshiva. So, <laughs> of okay. course, being okay. in uh, school from the wee hours in the morning until late at night, you didn't really get a physical activity, any physical education. It's a very rigorous education. Yeah. So um, I did significantly gain a lot of weight and really? over I would never the have high known. school. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you never would have known, but, yeah, but that's why I've made a total transformation. And I really... Um, that's very Scorpionic of you. By the way, yeah, a fellow that, Scorpio. <laughs> I did his chart before the show. But continue. Um, but I, I, I'm always a very... I love a challenge, you know, and I'm, I'm always very, um, the word would be, I guess, self-efficacy. I have a lot of self-efficacy and I, I'm always up for a challenge and I was able to get myself into the best shape of my life after high school, knowing that um, just being tired of being out of shape and um, just not happy were you in where I was. Were you in school? Were you no, in when college? I, Did so you graduate this is more when I started college. college. So you went, but you went straight from high school to college. Right. Okay. And that so, was a whole different world. Yeah. So tell me about that. Tell me what prompted you. What were you going through personally, I guess, with how you were feeling or how you were presenting yourself to the world at the time um, that prompted you to find Well, that, the finance, th that was totally not me. I mean, I'm more into the arts and I was always so more creative. So what made you pursue the finance? Um, basically, it, it just felt safe at the time. You know? Funny things, huh? It felt safe. Funny, after, after a whirlwind on the yeah. stock market last week. And I just, uh, I totally, I, and I never even, I actually never really worked, per se, in the, in the industry. finance industry because I, I really never held that much of an interest to do that. Uh, but after... College, I went to, um, so I got myself into the best shape of my life. How? What did you do? I, I exercised. I ate right. I didn't know any, I used to yo-yo diet, and that was just all wrong. Um, just simple nutrition and getting myself more active. Can you give me some basic things or fundamentals to your training that you, I, I did my own, mm -hmm. do my own training too, so I, I recently just, mastered, you know, I, I had a you know, rough Well, the thing is, patch, imagine so going from somewhere where you're doing nothing, right. absolutely nothing, and eating just all wrong. Right. Over years, that's going to put on weight, right. and, and of course, just the slightest difference in your daily routine of getting active, of uh, watching what you eat, portioning right. food. Okay. Very important to portion your food. Okay. Um, that was a major uh, uh, education to me, and, and I, I just love, when I got myself into the best shape of my life, I wanted to really um, bring that to whoever came my way, that, you know, clients, um, anybody I met, just to, to have them appreciate and, and um, just make it a part of their life. Not their life, but 
a part of their life. Okay, and that's an important thing. What, what's the distinction? What do you mean by that? Um, well, because you see too many people, they, fitness is totally their life. Right. And they cannot get outside Well, they're of compensating that. for something else, generally. Right. I mean, oftentimes you find, I, I, in my experience, I found people who were addicted to something or just recovered, they're recovered addicts from whatever vice they were abusing. And then they'll find whatever program they found to mm -hmm. rehabilitate themselves. And then they'll, they'll go from one addiction to another addiction, right. which is oftentimes an excessive display of exercise. And that's not right either. Yes, you must be healthy. You must care right. for yourself. It's about caring for yourself. We were talking, I think, a couple of weeks ago about um, the superficial and the spiritual elements of, of our being. And my whole premise is, of course, being whole with yourself, aligning your rational mind with your emotional mind mm -hmm. and your body and your soul. And I, I firmly believe with, with that the work within supersedes the externals. The world in which we live is always focusing on externals, externals, externals. But the externals are equally important because it helps to balance. Right. And that's another very important word that I wanted to bring to, to the attention of the audience today is balancing. Balancing life with love, yes. balancing diet, balancing ex... You know, you don't, you, you can't, don't make it all about one thing. You need to balance. Exactly. And I think that's what's lacking. And so when you find anyone who's doing anything fanatically, even... And we're not going to get into religion, but because we both agree that we don't really love right. religion. Right. <laughs> but um, anyone who does anything to excess that becomes fanatical about some element of life, whatever it may be, it could be food, it could even be nutrition. Like a fanatic, you know, like oh, I won't eat that because it's not, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, be conscientious, be aware. Do, but you know, it's you know, sometimes if you eat a, um, you know, like a, a, a regularly bought cucumber from the supermarket I mean what's the, I mean it's you're still eating a cucumber and right. if you really can't afford to buy organic or you can't locate organic at least you're eating a fresh cucumber exactly so God bless and at least you're on the right track that way we don't have to become over fanatical about you know over seeking to um, um, de deitize mm -hmm. any specific area or element of life but tell me more about like how what prompted you to get into this business to start brand new day fitness well because I and i love the name i love the name because i totally i'm I actually, always saying looking forward i'm always looking forward i got the name from the van morrison song brand new day oh wow cool which is one of my favorite um, cool. musicians um basically i wanted to make a change in people's lives obviously finance is not that much of a um well it's an important it part can of life be, finance of is course. an important part of life but I, I just felt like that was an area where um, I was always very interested in the way the body moves and body awareness. I'm very big on posture, balance, and as you say, um, balancing uh, life, balancing, not mm -hmm. having everything, um, you know, in one side excess and just basically posture mm -hmm. um, Thank and you for bringing that to my just, attention. It's exactly. something I need to work on too. I know. Yeah, I mean, when I'm comfortable, that. I think I generally when I'm walking, when I'm physical, when I'm standing, but when, when I'm sitting, I tend to relax right. myself and not be as uh, conscientious of. But I was noticing and watching the previous segments that yeah, I, I, I could. But I, that's what got me into um, acting as well, is because it, you know, it's so similar. You, you're Tell aware. Me about it of your body. And you become aware of yourself. Of yourself. And that's the key, the key, my darling, to finding true love is to know thyself and be aware of thyself before right. you can ever expect to communicate to another who you are and what you are and what you need and expect from a relationship. So it's, so it's, that's why I love you. <laughs> You're fabulous. <laughs> so, so continue to tell me about the alignment that you were working on. Well, just the fact that, um, I remember in, uh, acting school, they, they told us, um, you know, it's okay if you can, um, if your body is not, you know, properly, properly aligned. But the important thing is that you can bring yourself to that posture and that alignment. And, right. And that you can, because a lot of times it's, it's too late. You really want to practice good posture and going to what we're discussing today, your topic for today, confidence is it tells a lot about the way people perceive us, the first, you know, first impressions. Mm -hmm. um, confidence is a, you know, posture is a, a very big, that's the first thing that people notice. Tell me more. Um, just, it, it just portrays confidence or not. Um, the way you walk into a room or the way you uh, present yourself. Tell me, um, 
It's like, a habitual thing. Tell to, me the importance of confidence in your experience, in your business, in your career, and, and how you come across like your clients or your, you don't have to mention people's names, but tell me how confidence or lack thereof is an issue in your experience and your expertise. Well, I think that um, because confidence it, 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 shouldn't and, and, just in my, be... In my view, if I may just add another few words, it's it, it, value. We're lacking on this planet right now value, which mm -hmm. is esteem, my darling, self-esteem, value and confidence. And that's faith and value. These are the, the, these are the crux of what makes us exactly. human. And when we, we lose it, it, it has adverse effects on us emotionally, spiritually, financially, and physically. And it's manifesting itself in the, in the financial world right now, mm -hmm. in the material world. And, we're at, and it's manifesting itself in the spiritual world. And that's why I know that what we're doing right now is so of the time. Yes. So, so but, but please... What, what you're saying, value, that's something that's created. That's not something that... I think that... What I believe is, is that value has to be... I, I don't think that... People see, like training, I don't think people see the value until they actually can see you in action. And, um, well, that's a, that's that's, my, that's a misguided, mm -hmm. that's what's wrong with, that's what's, what's a misguided perception, that's what's wrong. Value always is, and this is a very profound lesson for Mr. Scorpio, because yes. the, the, the Scorpio value is shared resources, it's digging below the surface to find the real inherent value. Where do we find di diamonds are the most, diamonds, gold, platinum, the most precious, well gold is like through the roof. It, it beat, it, we, gold went up to $1,800 yeah. an ounce this week. $1,800, like yeah. $200 in, in, in like two days. It was insane. Um, but where do we go to find the most valuable resources on this planet? We have to dig below. Mm -hmm. And same within, we have to dig within, deep within us. So my message, my darling Solomon, is that value exists. We need to have appreciation. Appreciation is a very important word in context with the concept of value. Mm -hmm. Value exists, but if we don't know how to appreciate, guess what? We're going to misuse and abuse and devalue and deride and mock and destroy potential mm -hmm. that is not intended for us. Our purpose in life is to create and to feed and to nurture and nourish potential, not destroy it. Exactly. So it is my, I hear what you're saying yeah. and I agree with you that that is what the perception is. It's not everybody, it's just... Well, no, yeah. you're right. Yeah. You are right. And 98% of the, the, the perception is that people don't value. You're right. absolutely right. Confidence and that's why I'm here. They don't have the value, they don't have the confidence because they lack the ability to appreciate they're losing sight of what, it, what it's all about. And what I'm here doing or trying to do, and I believe with, with great success based on the response that I've gotten, mm -hmm. is to reteach people that the value exists. If you look within and learn to honor it, you need to honor the value that is you. And it means taking care of yourself. It means eating well, yes. sleeping well, not smoking, not drinking excessively, not abusing substances that are toxic for your body, not engaging in toxic relationships, not engaging in toxic situations, period. I, 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 I don't know if you missed this, but I'm repeating for the audience again. We went through this in the first episode. The three principles I teach my clients in my life, love, and relationship lessons uh, you know, I yell at principles of life, love, and relationships, is rule number one, everything is indicative of everything. Anything and everything you want to learn about a person, whether it's life, love, relationships, business, whatever, you will learn within the first five minutes of knowing them. If someone already did you wrong, you've already seen that, that they're not all there. Why? Don't test them. Don't mm -hmm. manipulate them. Just end it. Exactly. Why continue the cycle? End it. It's not going to change. It's going to get possibly, potentially worse. If you saw a red flag in the beginning, it is what mm -hmm. it is. Now, I'm not telling you to overanalyze symptoms that might be superficial. Right. If you can get to the core of the issue and see, like, you know, sometimes in the dating world, a young woman has met this great guy and, you know, he's still living at home and driving his mom's car and doesn't have it all together yet, but he's this brilliant entrepreneur. 
you know, like Bill Gates. Bill Gates had one vacation day from 19, was it 19... 74 to 1983, I believe. Forgive me if I'm misquoting the, the dates. But literally, I mean, that's what it takes to become yeah. as successful as he is. You need to commit. You need to devote. So how many girls do you think passed him up when he was in his garage creating Microsoft? Oh, forget it. And they're sorry today. <laughs> yeah, obviously. But my point is, so don't look at the superficial. Talk to the man. Talk to the woman. What are you doing? Why are you on your, you know, friend's couch? Why are you sleeping in your mom's living room? You know, what's going on in your life? What, what has brought you here? Sometimes it's not the superficial reason, but the, but the answer to that question, if it's truthful and sincere, might be so compelling that there, that superficial thing is something that you would be willing to contend with. But back to what we were saying is, rule number one is everything is indicative of everything. Mm -hmm. Anything and everything you need to learn about a person, you're going to learn within the first five minutes of knowing them. The question is, are you conscious? Are you aware? Rule number two is there's two sides to every coin. Every energy in the universe has a positive and negative manifestation. And it's up to each individual person to exercise his free will, his choice, to manifest the best of that human potential. And then rule number three is we attract what we are. So if you're attracting certain people to your life, Look within and see why, what is the lesson I need to learn through this relationship. Overcome, and if it works, great. And if it doesn't work, at least overcome that lesson. That lesson, Master yourself and grow from it and move on. But those, those are the three fundamental principles for, for, for my thing. So back to what I was saying about everything is indicative. With, with confidence, like you'll know, you'll know in the very beginning if something is right. If you can believe in it or not. And if it is, go with it. And if you, and if you don't, then just let it go and move on because it's not going to, to change right. or get better. But back to um, your experiences with confidence in your clientele. Can you tell me a little bit about that or how that's manifested in your Well, experience? like I said, I, I think that it's something that is um, built. And if it takes a couple of lessons before they finally you know, see it, and, and that's okay because and what are some not tools always, that you might everybody starts at a different level right and that's why everyone has a specific program where you're gonna go through at their specific um, pace right so can you give me some examples of how you may have um, directed someone who, who lacked confidence to maybe build their self-esteem or build their self-confidence in their working regimen and their training regimen with you? Sure. They fitness. come in sometimes, uh, I, I, well, somebody will come in and they will want something, let's say, uh, their goal is maybe to um, build um, muscle. Okay. But that's not, overall, where do we have to start? We have to work on <clears throat> uh, balance, core, core balance. Um, they need some flexibility. And the thing is, is that they, we'll get to that goal of, of gaining muscle, but we want to start from what you need right now is the fact that you need core, your balance, um, just to be in equilibrium. Mm -hmm. And just so that your body, uh, to safely bring you through a program with heavier resistance, you want to start at something, uh, even though it may not seem like a lot of fun or something that you really need, it's something that we have to start with for you to overall reach the uh, end goal. I love what you said before. You used the word habit, which is a very profound word in my lexicon. Tell me about habits and how they've, um, tell me how you've changed or transformed your clientele's habits well, to becoming more healthful. If, a lot, of a lot of my clients are elderly. Okay. And they have, um, not, not too, you know, but we'll say that they're, they're sitting at desk jobs. Right. And they are very tight and maybe they're hip flexors, they're calves, and they're not, they're tight in certain areas. So okay. their body is not moving okay. the way um, it's naturally it, it naturally to. is supposed to. So right. a squat is something that people don't uh, look at as, as an important movement, but babies do it. And that's a very important movement for, right. for people to, to be able to be flexible enough to get themselves into. And that's why... Um, I stress flexibility first and um, different mechanics of, of getting there 
and showing them how babies, are, it's a natural movement. People think it's, oh, this is not natural. This can't be natural. But it's because you're tight in certain areas. Right. If you watch the way a baby picks up um, a, a, a Cheerio from the floor, right. they are naturally in the right alignment to do a squat. And it's just amazing to see. You wow. see them, it, you, you yeah, really see the knees, the, yep. everything, yep. the way they are aligned is, is amazing. Right. But um, just, it, we it's really- We get conditioned, we get right. conditioned as we grow and progress. Like I, I always say this, that when we're born, we have, we have our purity, our truth, everything exists within us. And as we mature through life, we become adversely conditioned by the plagues that plague our society and it's 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 sad but we're i'm hoping to make a difference to change that and, and with your work as well i think we will make a difference to change that tell me about your cooking i, I understand you're yes. this healthy cooking guru tell me about it because I, that's one of my things that are very close and dear to my heart well, as well that's another thing i actually didn't discuss that with you uh but um before before even the finance <laughs> when i was um, in high school, I actually got myself very much so in, into uh, uh, cooking. Wow. I wanted to go to culinary school. Wow. That was, a, that was another thing. Wow. Um, but I did work in that field and saw that it was not something that, you know, it was more glorious on television than right. it was or in your own kitchen right. than it was in an actual restaurant. Right, right. Because, you know, the end product is not like going through the motions like you would in your own kitchen, but right. everything is already done. Right. So it's not as... Um, rewarding as I had thought just working in it let me we, we need to take a break and thank yes. our sponsors for a few minutes but when we come back what I'd love to do is take a look at some of the dishes that you've created yes and if you could talk more about what you do and what you're offering what services you you have available for your um, for your for the for the marketplace and what you can offer um, our viewers and um, listeners uh, to help better align them physically and health wise so when we get back from a uh, few messages from our very special sponsors. First, I would love to thank our sponsor, MountGox.com. They are an online exchange services for Bitcoins. They now take Euros, British Pounds, Australian Dollars, and Canadian Dollars. Continuing fees of 0.3% and usgoldcoins.com. That's 1-800-HOTCOIN, our trusted advisor for investments in rare gold and silver coins. Andy takes the mystery out of buying silver and gold by holding your hand. They take a hands-on approach. It's better to call and speak directly for current inventory. Again, that number is 1-800-HOTCOIN. And Meze Grill. Dot com, where authentic Mediterranean food meets modern flavor, now serving breakfast at 8th Avenue and 55th Street in New York City, just a couple of blocks south of Columbus Circle. And I'd love to hear from you. So give me a jingle, I'm sorry, give me a jingle at my Ask I Yell At voicemail. That number is 212569 Six nine six nine. Again, my ask I yell at voicemail is two one two five six nine six nine six nine. If you leave a message, I may answer your question on a, on a future episode of Always I Yell It on OnlyOneTV.com. Or if you like, you may email me at Ayelet at OnlyOneTV.com. That's Ayelet A Y E L E T at only one tv.com so back to what we were saying we were talking about your healthy cooking guru tell mm. me about that tell me how that developed in your life you were telling me how you thought about being a, a culinary chef but weren't into working in a steamy kitchen and so tell me about what you do now and what you provide well a lot of times people what i realize is people do uh, personal training and on top of that they don't know what to do outside of the training so they're eating yeah, they're working with a trainer for an hour or two a week and that's the only exercise they're getting and a lot of times you know they're not doing any anything outside of that and um, they're just eating the way they normally did but trainers sometimes don't go over that right um, so you're more of a coach but we're also very much in a um, 
a specific uh, only tell. Um, we're not allowed to really give that much nutritional um, advice. Okay. Um, except for the ones who are really um, just in, in good standing health, not okay. somebody who would be on, let's say, certain um, high uh, hypertension medicine or or just just as an example. Right. Okay. Um, but what I noticed was a lot of people do not have that, uh, who are training, don't have that background of, 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 of knowing what to eat. Okay. And that's why I try to give that to my clients as a service as well. Okay, so tell me about um, some of the dishes that you've created and that you prepare. So what you do is you go to people's homes right. and you'll personally take a hand-on approach in coaching them through fitness with exactly. a rigorous training program but also guide them and prepare meals for them. In so do you them, cater events? Them. Like if we were gonna have an office party, would you cater yes. an event? Wow, how wonderful is that? And how do we reach you if we wanna reach you for that? Um, at info at brandnewdayfitness.com. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Or we can call you as yes. well. Yes, okay, 310-944-4445. Cool. Wonderful, so tell us about this fabulous looking dish. This is so a yummy. salmon croquette oh, with yummy, a yummy, yummy. small salad on oh, top. Oh, how lovely. And a uh, horseradish uh, coulee. Beautiful. Yeah. Looks lovely. Thank and you. I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Moroccan chicken with um, raisin sauce and rooted vegetables, roasted rooted vegetables, and uh, rice. And how is the chicken prepared? And zatar chips. Oh, wow. You know zatar. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Very lovely. And I, de by the way, I love to cook as well. And FYI, we have something else in common. My mom yeah. raised us literally on all gourmet natural foods. No Gerber, no Gerber went through this body. <laughs> Just my mother literally used to right. blend all our foods for us. This looks amazing. What is this? This is a roasted chicken and for those who love... Oscar's getting hungry now too. <laughs> those who love uh, polenta, I've reduced those carbs and made it with red lentils. So oh, it's wow. a gorgonzola. It's a, uh, it's a low fat gorgonzola that I use. So it's um, just to get that creamy lactic, you know, okay. in that dish. But without those added carbs of the um, Relax, baby. the uh, cornmeal. Okay. So we're using red lentils here. Beautiful. And uh, it's got oven dried carrots and an Israeli salad. Very nice. And it's chicken, roasted chicken. It's roasted chicken. Very nice. Yep. And this? This is uh, just um, roasted vegetable. It's uh, an antipasto. Oh, very nice. With the olives. Yeah. Are they cooked olives? No, they're That's another they're Mediterranean just, Middle just, Eastern dish. Yeah, that Did you ever very... have the chicken with the cooked olives? That's so good chicken with the cooked olives. Yeah, um, you should try that. I don't know that dish. We should, we should, have, we should have dinner yes. sometime. <laughs> I should have <laughs> you over, definitely, because you'd love my food. I, I cook this in the same type of fashion. And this is um, black bean soup and uh, rice Okay. with uh, creme fraiche. Beautiful, very beautiful. But everything is like very low fat. Um, I, I try to use only good fats. Um, low Extra glycemic. virgin olive oil. Uh, carbs, good. Um, very lean proteins. Have you heard of qui am I quinoa? Saying? Quinoa. Yes, that I live off of that. That's isn't that great? It's actually. I recently tried it like not too long ago, and I read about it. I heard about it, and I was like, wow! And it's so good. Yes, it really is good. It's a. Do you use that protein. often? Yes. Yeah, I heard it's like the and it's, it's all so, originally from the Amazon. Yes. Or Peru? Is it Peru or Peru? I think, it, or I think it's a Africa. Yeah, I mean it's no, it's South American. South, but it's I think it's South also in, grown in Africa. Oh really? Okay, cool, interesting. But you're right, the South American. It's South is, American. Is where, it's, yeah. I believe it's Peruvian and Amazon. Yeah, is where it originated. And this is. And this is an apple uh, crepe with uh, powdered Granny Smith powder. Wow. I the rind I I uh, oh, made how, into powder. How creative. And I didn't. I use agave nectar. In this, uh, in these dishes, so beautiful. That, uh, bring down that glycemic. My darling, if index. you want to be, I mean, yeah. you have to get in the kitchen, and though I know yeah. it's hot in the kitchen, but you can do it. Yeah. So you know, but but I love what you're doing because but you're really thing, yeah. what I love most about you, as I do with all my friends, is that they pursue, or people that I act, actually admire, is that they pursue their passion. Yeah. And if you, I firmly believe that when you pursue your passion and you're doing it with all of your heart and excellence. Success is just inevitable, and so yeah. I know you're destined for greatness. And Thank you. I'm very proud and honored to have you as a friend and as my my guest today. Thank you. So, talk. Tell me a little about your personal life. Let's talk about because we're okay. gonna we're gonna. I don't know how much time we have left, but we're gonna start our Ask Ayelet segment, which is mm -hmm. an ideal time, I think, for us to 
get back to some questions. Actually, if, if I may, before we do that, um, there were a couple of points that I wanted to tell the audience from last week's show. Oscar, what baby? What? Okay, we're gonna sit and we're gonna sit because the audience. <laughs> okay, Oscar wants to drink, I think, but he's gonna have to wait another 15 or 20 minutes until we're off camera. Okay, but delicious. Okay, you had your kibble and you had your water. Now let's uh, yes, let's show the world what a good boy you are. Yes, tell them. Okay, and no kissing in public, darling. Okay, excuse me, audience, but little boys come first. You know how that is. Um, okay, so. What I wanted, there were a couple of points that I wanted to mention. Um, first, please forgive me, but I miss, I didn't misquote. I said the correct quote, but I misplaced the quote. Thomas, Je Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence. He also wrote the Constitution. But I cited the quotation from the Declaration of Independence last week as part of the Constitution, which was my mistake. It was just a mistake, a misspeaking, a slip of the tongue, if you will. So please excuse me. And for the audience tonight, I do want to give you the exact quote because it's a very important part of something that I'm working on um, that, that, or a message that I'd like to convey. Thomas, Thomas Jefferson wrote in the Declaration of Independence, he wrote and he said, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, unquote. So that is the quote. It was in the Declaration of Independence. Yes, Thomas Jefferson wrote it. He did also write the Constitution, but I miss, misspoke, so forgive me. And what I'm trying to bring to the attention of, 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 of everyone here tonight is the importance of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness and identifying and defining what it really is. Because God created us or the source created us or however you want to define our creator. We were created to have life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. And in my view, 98% of us are prisoners to the plagues that pervade our society and that, um, that manifest in our society. And it's because the predominance of our lives are based on non-truths. And that is what I am so trying to sort of reinforce in my message is that the only way to have real love in your love, you know, I, you can't qualify it by saying real love or true love because if it isn't true love, then it's not love. It's anything and everything but love, okay? If there is no truth, if there is no honor, if there is no value, if there is no devotion, it's uh, devotion as distinct from commitment because devotion is something we do from the heart. Commitment is something we do because we signed a contract and we're supposed to do it. And we feel this sense of obligation. Again, very fear-based, um, fear-based feelings. And so what I'm trying to, um, I guess, enforce t tonight is the message of being truly free. And the only way you can be really free is knowing who you are and being, having the courage to be true to it. And this is the challenge of life because life is going to try to throw you a curveball. My darlings, it throws us lots of curveballs. I think we know this. And that's where, that's where we're put to the test and put to the challenge of facing our fears. Courage, my darlings. I had this discussion recently. You know, I'm often noted for my courage, my personal courage as, a, as an individual. And one day I was talking to a friend and I said, I'm afraid. I forget what, what the context was. I was just sharing in confidence with a very close and dear friend. I'm afraid. And my friend said, you're not afraid. You're, you're Miss Courage. You can't be afraid. I said, what are you talking about? Of course I'm afraid. Am I going to let it get the best of me? No, that's Miss Courage. Courage is mastery of fear, not the mm -hmm. absence of fear. It's looking fear fa face to face and saying, guess what? I beat you because I have love 
and I'm choosing out of love. And this is a very important message, especially in this week's current events, if you will, you know, the message of confidence, you know, the economic crisis we're going through, the, the roller coaster ride. We, we went down 630 points, the Dow Jones. I think it was Wednesday or Thursday. And by the end of the week, if you had slept through the entire week, it's like, you, you, would have, you, would have, you would have never known that anything had happened this week because we, we ended up exactly where we started out last week. And such is life. And what it comes down to is know your truths. Know th what's going on in the economic world. Know what's going on in the political world. Don't hear and read the propaganda. Don't read and see everything you're seeing on television, mainstream media. Read educate yourself, inform yourself, and then make your own decisions, make your own informed decisions, and find the courage within to believe in yourself. You know, this is a, I, I really believe this is a depression, people will debate it with me, but this is an economic depression. There's really just no money. Prices are going up, value is going down, it's just, it's bad. And the only thing we can do, and, but it's an amazing opportunity, just like the, the recession of the 70s, you know, the greatest organizations, the greatest, that's why I believe in Brand New Day Fitness too, because the greatest organizations were created and founded in times of recession. So look within yourself, find your path, find your unique individual purpose and pursue it. What's the worst that can happen? You get knocked down, so you pick yourself up again and you keep on trekking away because you'll get knocked down again, but you just got to keep on trekking. If you believe in it, if it is your truth, you will prevail in the end. And um, again, I guess the key words is confidence, courage, and knowing yourself and being true to yourself despite the challenge, despite the fear, despite the pain that you may confront. You, you have it within you and you owe it to yourself. Each of us owes it to ourself and to our creator. This is what God expects of us. Not to be oppressed by you know, socialist governments and communist governments. It is the reason this country was founded by our forefathers, the brave men of George Washington. And, you know, they were human beings also, so they were flawed, just for the record. But they were human beings, but they were, they were powerful, and they were entrepreneurs, and they were inspirational leaders and revolutionaries of our time. And, and it's the time, yes, Oscar's concurring with me. <laughs> right, Oscar? Right? Um, they were revolutionaries of our time, and now we need to revolutionize what is pervading our society and get back to the basics of what makes us human individuals and why we are here. And, and it's about loving yourself, and it's about loving yourself, and it's about loving yourself. Yes. And I think that transcends everything we're talking about yes. tonight. It, it, it's, that's just the basic. And loving yourself doesn't mean saying you love yourself. And saying, oh, I'm happy. It's, it's caring for yourself. And that manifests in every element of your life. Personal life, professional life, physical life, emotional life, spiritual life. All of these are part of you. And they must be aligned in order to have a holistic, love-centered life. Or to live a, um, or to live a life of, of holism. And what I call or refer to as living a love-centered life. So, now that I've finished mm -hmm. covering my... Uh, I have an Ask Ayala question that my beloved guest from last week, Athena Reich, left, I left her unanswered with it that I'm going to get to in a minute. But why don't you tell me a little bit about you and your relationship patterns or what you've been experiencing. You're single, you're fabulous, fabulous and single, everyone. <laughs> Solomon Abadi, and, uh, but he's waiting for the right one yes. to come along his path. And what you need to do now is work to identify who she is, so that when right. she appears and reveals herself to you, again, folks, you might want to go back on my website, alwaysayella.com, to publications and download the free download of The Gift. It's a poem I authored recently. I composed it, wrote it, and authored it. Um, and it's The Gift. It's how to find your true love. I, I know you're going to love it as well. Nice. But um, you need to know yourself and identify not the superficial qualities that often us you know, ex, you know, excellent people, you know, the people that try to strive for excellence and perfectionism, you know, we often can be guilty of mm -hmm. missing the, you know, what's inside. And uh, my mother recently told me something to that um, extent. She said, it's going to be very hard for you to meet somebody because you got, you know, just your standards the are way, high. Yeah, standards are high, I guess, because she raised me with 
just. But that's okay, a, darling. But you need to. But, to that, but that's an important thing. Yeah. You can't be with someone who doesn't share those right. values. Exactly. So you're going to find someone. If you have high standards, if you're someone who pursues excellence in your day to day existence, if that's something that is inherent in your being, being with someone who doesn't do that is just, it's like an oxymoron. Right. I mean, you're going to be in hell. You're going to live a living confinement of hell for the next 30, 40, 50 years of your life in, in a marriage as such. So you know now that you need to find someone who shares those high standards. But sometimes she may not appear. Mm -hmm. On the outside, to, to, you know, you have to give people a chance. I always say true connections take time to develop. Give people a chance. Get to know them. The best love relationship you're ever going to find, your Beshert, she has to be your best friend. You yeah. have to be her best friend. And everything else will sort of fall into place. But tell me about your dating experience and what's, what's been really, happening with you. I haven't gotten really serious into the dating scene except for like really the last few months just okay. to be just being busy with career career um but now i you know you just know you just look the way it is today um you really like i i have friends they're all dropping like flies getting married or really? moving or and you know you do want to share right something with somebody else right you want to so, share yourself and, and you know it, that's what, me, that's I what was marriage the type is that always said no i i, I could I'm okay with, right. you know, being a bachelor, you know. Right. But it, you really do need somebody to... You need a partner. Yes. A partner. And, you know, there, there will be people that might, might debate that terminology. But, yeah, I do believe that your marriage, your true love, should be a partner. Not, again, when we, we talked about um, assets, liabilities, and capital, if you want to go back to episode one, it's she's going to be an asset for you. She's going to increase your capital, and you're going mm -hmm. to do the same for her. Now, she's going to have some liabilities because so do you. You're human. But at the end of the day, if she's your beshert, if she's your true love, you're going to have a win-win relationship, a love-centered relationship that's founded on truth where you can look at each other and say, I truly honor you. When she walks in the room, you're like, mm -hmm. wow, because it's just like the most amazing person just walked in the room for you. And that's how you should perceive your beloved each and every time you see her and never take her for granted. And you're going to value her for who she is as an individual and for what she brings to the table for you. And you're not going to feel this sense of obligation. Oh, I'm married. I have to be home for dinner at 6 o'clock or else. Ball and chain. No. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. No wonder people don't want to be married anymore because that's what the... But, but you know what? That's what they're contending with because right. their foundation doesn't exist. Their foundation is based on lies and superficial qualifications. So, of course, they're feeling that way. They don't want to go home. They have to, what are they, what are, what's that expression? They have to get beer goggles before they can go home to the wife. You know, they have enough of or these. Or have their own time with well, their friends or whatever that is. Whatever, whatever that <laughs> is. But, you know, true love, yeah, you, you still have to have your own time. Yeah. Spoken as an independent, self-sufficient woman for the majority of my life. You know, you become accustomed to that, but I'm willing to share and I'm able to share myself and I want to be part of someone else's life and someone else wants to be a part of my life and that's what makes it love. It's a willing, a volition mm -hmm. from your heart. That, my darling, is devotion. Someone, you need something and your partner is going to just do it for you. Done. Right. Done. You don't even have to ask for it. She's able to provide it and it's just done because that's, Love, that's devotion, not meeting commitment. You halfway. Meeting you halfway, caring for you, trusting you, right. understanding you, right, Oscar? Right? I've always said also conversation is very important to have. You have to have an have intellectual, a, intellectual conversation. If you don't have, an, you know, Bill right. Clinton, I'm, I'm a fan of Bill Clinton for the record. Um, not his politics for the record. Bill Clinton, you did some wrong there, but God bless you. Um, but as an individual man, I think he's one of the extraordinary men. And one, you know, and we know he had some mishaps in his marriage, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. But I do believe in their marriage in the, in the, in the end of the day, no matter what the, the right. people will say about it. But you know what he says about his wife, no matter what has transpired, good or bad or indifferent? He loves to talk to her. They can talk for hours because she's a, his intellect. I don't know what, you know, I've never interviewed Bill Clinton nor have mm -hmm. I interviewed Hillary, but... They obviously have um, some 
but I think that they have true connection potential. They just went astray or he went astray or whatever it was. God bless. It all is to teach and to, to, to strengthen us and to make us grow. But you must have an intellectual compatibility. Right. You must have an emotional compatibility. You must have a spiritual compatibility. And the most important thing is common goals and common values. I don't yes. care. I mean, not to profess because... Yes, especially be, you being a Jewish man, I would always you know, try to propagate that you marry someone Jewish and have Jewish children. That, that's important to me and it's important to our, you know, our community, our culture, etc. But oftentimes you can find the right, she can have the right values, but not necessarily for a woman because the woman carries the, the, tr the, the tradition and the faith right. in, in the Jewish religion. So I don't ever want to be quoted as you know, advocating for a, a, a you know, fabulous Jewish man to marry someone who isn't Jewish. But... If she were to come across your path and she probably, and, and she wasn't, and she willingly and wanted to become Jewish, that could also happen. And she volu right. voluntarily converted, not for you, but because that's what she always wanted, that could also happen. But what, what I'm saying is, it's not necessarily religion, because religion is created by man. The Torah was given to all of humanity. All of humanity. There are non-Jews on this planet that are required to, to, fill, to fulfill the seven... Noah made laws mm -hmm. of, of, uh, of the seven commandments of Noah and not necessarily all of the Ten Commandments or all of the 39 commandments of, of, of or, or the hundred, what is it, 613, command, 613 commandments of being a Jew. But what I'm saying is that um, it's not religion, it's values, mm -hmm. it's goals. Who are you? Be clear about who you are. What is your life like? Not what you're propagating on the internet or, 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 or projecting onto the world that you wish you were, but what are you really? Who are you really? And when you're whole with that and you're sound with that, then you walk around with confidence. Mm -hmm. Even if, with all due respect, your posture is a little off, you're walking, around, a yeah, you're walking around with confidence, with a knowledge, with a self-worth and a self-esteem that no one can take from you. And until you meet that one that fulfills you, that you can fulfill, that you're going to be like, wow, when she, you see her, and she's going to be wow when she sees you, and it's a mutual thing, then you know you found, then you, then you know you found it. Kind of like you can have that in any environment. And that's the, yes. that's the thing. Yes, yes. It's not just that posture, and balance, or whatever. Right. But it's also having it in any environment, anywhere, anywhere you go. A absolutely, absolutely, important. absolutely. Um... We are almost out of time. Can you believe how much fun this was? This was, I can't believe So before, I, I was going to ask, answer more questions from Ask Ayala, but I'm going to answer um, Athena's, Athena Reich was my guest, my very honored and darling guest last week, and her voice is amazing. You must check her out at athenareich.com. Um, she asked the question, what is growing together? And I gave, I've given it some thought. She caught me, it was towards the end of the show, I didn't have time to answer it. Hopefully we'll have some time to answer any of your questions if we have a few more minutes left. But after giving it some thought, and I'm reading so I don't want to miss any important points, it's like I just said, growing together is you have to have a common foundation to begin with. And your relationship must not have been founded on any coercion, manipulation whatsoever. It must be founded on truth and, un and unbridled love, pure love in its purest of forms. And if you want to know what that means, you can go on my website, alwaysayala.com, and you can learn at large what I, how I define what true love is. It begins with having integrity. It begins with being whole, and we can work on that together as well. If you want to reach me directly, you can do so. But how do we grow together in a relationship? How do you know when you're ending a relationship or you're growing together, when you're, when you're confronted with challenges? So the answer, my darling Athena, is that when you're sharing a common goal and per purpose at the onset of the relationship and you're equally contributing to that shared goal and purpose despite the challenge, meaning you've made a conscious and subconscious agreement to this other person, to your partner, to embark on this shared journey together in whatever the capacity is. It could be a business venture, it could be a romantic venture, it could be a marital venture, whatever the agreement is, whatever the terms of it is. You're, you're growing together when you are confronted with challenges that are inherent to your unique union, your unique relationship, 
but yet, despite that, you're still adhering to your common goals, you're still equally contributing to that uh, shared goal and purpose, despite your challenges, you haven't deviated or have betrayed that common goal and purpose, and along the way, you are mastering your individual selves, and being true to yourself and your, the sanctity of your union all the way. Right, Oscar? Oscar knows this all too well because he's, he's my buttalicious and my cuddalicious, <laughs> mind you. Right, Oscar? Yes, we're finishing up in five minutes, baby, okay? So it's mastering ourselves along the way and all the while being true to yourself and the sanctity of your union and that was created by this couple, whatever its unique purpose may have been. That is how you know you're growing together if, if you haven't deviated from your path. How do you know if you as an individual are growing as an individual? If you've already identified what your unique purpose is and now you're confronted with challenges, are you going to give up and throw in the towel? Hell no. You're going to keep on trekking no matter, no matter what. You're going to keep on trekking because if you believe it, it will be. And right when you're ready, when you're ripened, the fruits of your work will appear and, and, and present themselves. And that, my darlings, is love. And it starts within, it starts with you. Um, I don't know how much more time we have. Do we have any? Four more minutes. So, do you have any questions for me? Um, it, the par part of uh, manipulation, and uh, I, I thought that was interesting, because okay. you always see, um, uh, friends of mine say, you know, you have to know how to play the game, or you have to play the game, and I, I really don't agree with that. I love you for you that. You have to be... Um, and I absolutely love you for that, because that's... A, one of my that. best friends says, um, be in the moment. Beautiful. And I could, live in the moment. I firmly, oh. firmly agree and firmly concur and support that. Be present, be here. And right. be true to, to all of you, your pain, your inner child. And I don't mean to sound all whatever, you know, guru-like or whatever, but, you know, the, there's a child within each of us that's crying for whatever it is that we need or want. Feed it. Serve him. Serve her. And, and, and be. And just be. And don't play the game. All you're going to end up with is a nice, fat divorce 20 years from now, 30 years from now, 10 years from now however long it's going to take for it to dissipate. But if you start off with the games, women, I know there was this book written a few years ago, and ironically, they ended up divorced too, the authors of the book, <laughs> The Rules. It was, it was I, I did it. I did my research, and I tested the rules, and my determination on that was, if you play the rules, you will get a boy. But if you really want a man in your life, women, for, to, to the women viewers, if the women in the world really want a man, a real man in your life, then be the woman that you are, be true to who you are, and he will present himself. If you want a boy, play the games. Lots of love to you, and we'll see you in divorce court in 20 to 30 years. And I know your, your divorce lawyers are going to make a killing with that because that's what they've been doing. So why feed, I mean, and I love some lawyers here and there along the way, but with all due respect to the legal profession, um, isn't it better to live in love and, and harmony and peace and fulfilling yourself. Remember what Thomas Jefferson said and what our Creator endowed us with. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. If you're not whole with yourself, you are not capable of being happy. No matter how smiley your face is on your email, on your mood of the day, or whatever. So I wish you a fabulous week ahead. Hang tough, be courageous, and with lots of love, I am always a yell it until next week. Lots of love.